new job site gotta love the start of a new job site this is going to be a 40 by 72 residential accessory building we're going to have a 12 foot wide 14 foot tall door here in case you ever want to fit a motorhome or something back in this corner back here we've got a nine foot by eight foot door more for like your lawnmower maybe pulling a vehicle in and there's going to be a nice eight foot deep wraparound porch that's going to come across the front corner and you know that's going to kind of they want to see a nice looking building from the front of their house when you pull up you know it'll have a nice appearance and this front area here is mainly where they're going to spend most of their time a little kitchen you know a little guest entertainment area and the very back the goal is to put a basketball hoop right in the middle there'll be a nice vaulted ceiling you know, I'm pretty excited for this one because it's gonna be some really cool colors. We've never done a black and zinc gray. I think it's gonna be really sharp. Uh, white doors and windows, it's gonna really pop. The porch, cedar post, I think those colors are all gonna, you know, jive really well together. And the nice thing is this job site's not far from my house. So to get here, it's like a five minute drive. That is always a positive. The hard part's done. The post piers are all in the ground. They're all where they should be, and we're gonna get going on this. So the first thing we're gonna do is, you can already see we got the laser set up. We'll go around, we'll check every bracket, make sure what the grade location is. We'll transfer that over to our post and start making something up. All right, so the very first thing that we do on every job site after the porch or the piers are poured the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set the laser back out because we set all these piers off of a laser mark, a laser benchmark, and we're going to go back and we're going to double check. We're going to try to make sure that we find where our highest pier is because that's going to be what determines us, or sorry, the highest one that we find is what we're going to use to determine our benchmark for all of the posts, all the trusses, like everything will be based off of wherever the highest post is. So the easiest thing to do is we just kind of sight right down the line, find the high one. We've already determined that this one is probably one of the highest ones. And all I'm gonna, oh, the laser's not on. Okay, gotta have the laser on. That's kind of the most important. Way to go, Greg. It's not your fault. We'll blame uh, we'll blame me. It was my fault. Okay, so we're gonna come back. We're gonna set this tape measure up, and I'm gonna find what I love about the Spectra laser is it tells me when I'm close. It tells me I'm right there. It's telling me I'm point or one inch off, and I can find zero really easy. Okay, so 45 and a quarter. This is one of my highest ones. I know I got another one up here. Okay, this is 44 and 7 eighths. Now, since that number is smaller, that means the post pier, the bracket, is higher, which means this is probably my highest. I'm gonna double check where I know I've got a couple more but right now, 44 and 7 eighths is our benchmark. Yep, first one in. Okay, I don't even have to worry. It's bigger than 44 and 7 eighths. So we'll check our last wall just you only get one chance. Man, you look at the tops of those things, Greg. Yeah, we did a pretty good job. Not bad for our second building. Oh, this is number three. Never mind. Just double check. Measure twice, cut once, Greg, right? That's right. Oh, yeah. So this one's right around that 45 also. So we're gonna go off of 44 and 7 eighths. So now we're gonna use that as our benchmark. I'll show you next what we do with that number. All right, so since we just, we just determined that our benchmark across the highest bracket was 44 and 7 eighths, we then determined that our 
grade line is going to be at 43 and a half. So what that means is 43 and a half is going to be the bottom of our grade. And that is what is going to determine everything from there on up through the post. So now what I do is I go through and I will just measure each bracket. This one is sitting at 45 and a 16th, 45 and a 16th, which means one and nine sixteenths above this bracket will be the bottom of our grade board. So I'll go ahead and I'll write one and nine sixteenths. I'll do that as you can see on every bracket has its own measurement and that measurement will be used to determine each post's marks to make sure that everything when it's built is all in the same plane and perfectly level. As long as that laser's level. And Spectra, you've never let me down, so I think we're okay. Um, pretty simple. So I'll just go around and do that on every one. When you're working with me, you gotta be able to read upside down because I don't write upside down, so that's the way it is. Also got to write legible because I found that if you don't spend a little bit of time making sure your fives don't look like eights and your twos don't look like fives but we've had that mistake too so whenever you're having a problem on site it usually is to nobody's fault except for poor communication between multiple people that's the root of all problems the nice thing is we must have done a pretty good job on these brackets because I don't think there's a variance or a variation of more than two inches is my biggest number. I think my lowest is about one and three eighths maybe. That's not bad. Not bad, oh, five yeah. eighths. Yeah, that's really good. And the other thing is always make sure we write our numbers on the inside of jam brackets or the inside of a corner because we'll come through. This is a universal bracket. So it's got two ears on each side. What we could do is we could just leave this off for a nice pad and put in a universal jam bracket, which would get bolted right here and just have the L. But we like to do this. It's a lot stronger. We can put the post in, we can bolt it temporarily until we put all of our jam trims on. And then when that time comes, we cut the ear off the one side on the inside of the jam, run our trims through. So it's a little bit better way of doing things. I always get that question too. So a lot of questions continually about our post. These are engineered by Ohio Timberland. They make them, they're all, you can see the bottoms are all a CCA treated Southern Yellow Pine. And what they do is they finger joint these and then they everything is milled four sides. So it goes through a mill and they mill both top, bottom and both sides to bring it to a true dimension. That way when they come together, they're all the same size. And what they do is they glue them and then they come through with a uh, rivet machine basically that clinches them together, squeezes them nice and tight, and then it throws a rivet through them. So there's actually, you don't see them on this side, but if I turn a post over, they've got rivets going through the whole thing that get sheared off. And it's a, a great column, rated to be one of the strongest columns in the industry. They're nice and straight. And they're, you know, on this size of a building, these are laminated three ply two by sixes. So they take three two by sixes and laminate them together. They also, the center ply is notched out. And we do that because our trusses sit in the center ply. And since we don't know exactly where our piers are, they could be a quarter inch or half inch one way or the other when we get done setting them in concrete. This allows us to change this dimension. Instead of sitting right here, we might need to cut them right here for our trusses to sit in. Okay, so now that we have our uh, all of our brackets and piers marked, now we're gonna come through and we're going to make our story pole. A story pole is used to replicate the same measurements multiple times across different posts, or really you can use it anywhere. Uh, but for us, what we do is we 
we try to make one story pole that has all of our measurements, our header heights, our window heights, our girt locations, our truss locations, everything that has to be transferred to every post. That way when they get moved over into the building and installed, they get put up and everything is level perfect. Uh, we don't like to throw around perfect, so we'll say really freaking close. Okay, I just went and I wrote down all of my bracket measurements. This is what's on every bracket. And that is the distance from the bottom of the bracket to the bottom of the grade board. So I go from two inches to inch and a half. That's not a bad spread. We did a pretty good job setting our brackets. So what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to put these on the bottom of every post. And that way we always know and can distinguish each post to a bracket. What I'm doing right now is I'm marking all of my steel locations. That is where the bottom of the truss is gonna set in this pocket. So I'm, I'm gonna mark the top of the post and then I'll be able to, oh man, that's a tough one. Then I'll take my story pull and I just line up this new mark that I just made with the heel mark of my story pole. Then I'm gonna transfer all these marks that I just made onto my post. And I'll repeat that process on every one of these. We got all of our posts made up then we come through we'll set them right in the bracket here and we will line up the heel mark that we've designated right at the face of the bracket and we'll do that on all of them and the reason we do that is it will set us up for success and all of our girts will get nailed straight that way you know if one of these guys is back one is forward then when we start laying out the building and getting nailed it looks all wonky and it doesn't go to go together very well so just set them in the holes line them up right on the face boom there's all of our marks that's where we'll line up all of our girts we could use a skid loader for this which that would be the smart thing to do however our skid loader forks are behind our pile we were not very smart on that one. I'll get these. First wall is framed up. We got it all nailed. You can see here, we're gonna go ahead and splice it from this post to this post. So that's why we got these nails just pulled. We set them in temporarily just to make sure everything lines up. 
and bringing the Kubota in right now. I'm not sure what Greg's doing. He got to move that pile first. But we're going to do this in two picks. Uh, we could do this in one. However, it'd be a little squirrely at 16 foot tall, 72 foot long. So we're going to be smart about it. We'll do it in two picks. We'll do five posts and three posts. to uh, go back and forth to my shop a couple of times get some things we forgot batteries stuff like that but not bad we got a lot of material cut up we got the back wall framed and stood we got the end wall framed and stood Greg's finishing up getting all the bolts and nuts and all that good stuff done so they're secure tomorrow We'll go ahead and we'll probably get this wall stood up here, which has got a porch header to deal with. It's got a, a 9 by 8 garage door right there that we got to deal with. And once that's done, man, it's on to the trussing. We'll come right in this garage door, truss away. First days on the job are always the most exciting. And something about that new, new job site. Greg already knows. <laughs> Zach, Zach, say hi. Have you ever said hi to the YouTube? We're gonna cut that and edit it. It's just to make him feel better at the time being because it's the end of the day. Uh, no, I'm joking about that. That's uh, Greg's little brother. Well, it's his bigger brother, but he's younger, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. 